it from James 1, verses 2 through 8. Consider in pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops preservation, persever perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to him. But when he asks, <clears throat> he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unable in all he does. Here in the reading of God's holy word. So in our scripture for today, we find James writing his letter to the Jewish people that have been spread out around the world. And in his opening, he discusses how we should rejoice when we meet with various trials in this life. See, James knows that when your faith is tested, it makes you stronger. Now, it makes sense that his opening idea is about this faith being tested and how it can make you stronger because... When he's writing to the people that have been displaced around the world, see, they have been displaced from their homes due to being conquered by others. Specifically, at this time period, there had been several wars fought against the Romans. And as such, the Romans began to crack down upon them and they spread out around the Middle East. And what a huge test of faith this must have been for them that they were going through. To once be the chosen people, believing that God would never allow them to be conquered, and then to find themselves being removed from their home by others that are conquering them, that must have created in them at least a little bit of doubt, right? But James goes on to discuss what we must do when we find ourselves lacking in wisdom, which I think could be translated to also say, what should we do when we don't know what to do? Well, James says that we can ask God and he will give his wisdom to us. But if we are going to ask God for wisdom or what we should be doing, we have to do so from a standpoint of having faith in him. We have to have faith without any doubt that he is going to answer us in his way and in his time. If we do not have faith, James says, and we ask the Lord for wisdom, we are told that we should not expect to gain that wisdom. Now that also makes sense. When you think about it, if you don't have faith, if you don't believe in God, then why would you expect him to offer you his wisdom when you call upon him? So we all know that life is going to be filled with difficulties. And in fact, we are told that we are not expect to have easy lives if we choose to follow Jesus because of our faith. If anything, we are told to expect that we will suffer because of our faith. After all, Jesus didn't tell us to take up our lawn chairs and follow him. He didn't tell us to take up our beach umbrellas and follow him. He told us to take up our cross and follow him. But I want you to think about this, though. James tells us that when we, expect, when we experience things that are tough, that that is a good thing because it means that our faith is going to grow. When was the last time you thanked God for having your faith tested? I know that sounds like a weird question. And essentially it's saying something like this. Wow, I am so glad things are going bad right now. I am so happy that I'm facing this terrible thing in my life. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the opportunity to grow my faith. And I know all of that sounds very strange to us when we hear it. 
See, we find ourselves in our hard times of facing things difficulty, of difficulty. We often do call on the Lord for help. And do not misunderstand me. I believe that is exactly what we should do when we face tough times. I believe in the power of prayer and that God can and will help us. But what we find often, though, is when God doesn't answer our prayers the way we want, or when he does, and when he does, inter, but then when he does intervene on our half, behalf of us, do we then remember to praise him when those things are over? Do we remember to say thank you for growing my faith? Do we tell others how God has delivered us from these terrible things we were facing? Well, the answer tends to be no. When that hard thing is over, we simply think to ourselves, wow, I'm glad that's over. I didn't think I was going to get through that. And I want you to focus on that sentence. I didn't think I was going to get through that. You see, the truth is, when we come through hard times, it is not just I that comes through them. It is we that comes through them. We being God and I coming through those difficult times. So let us remember to thank God when our faith grows. Let us praise him in those difficult times. And let us tell others how he walks beside us in our time of need. Well, how else do we find our faith being put to the test? Well, our faith is put to the test in how we follow the commandments that God gives us. If you want to see your faith grow, start by doing the things that God has called you to do. Often we hear things like, I can't talk to that person over there about Jesus. Well, guess what? Yes, you can. You can because it is what God has called you to do. He has called us all that have faith to make disciples of the nations. So if you want to see your faith grow, use it to teach others. We hear things like, I can't possibly get more involved in the church. Look at my life. It's so busy. I don't have time to do this. If I give any more money or time, I won't be able to take care of myself. Well, this is a way to grow your faith as well. We are told that God cares for the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. And they do not want for things. And he loves us even more. So of course he will take care of you. You see, there are opportunities to grow our faith all around if we stop and look for them. God also tests our faith by allowing for delays in our lives. Now this is one of the most frustrating things for us as a modern people to do. To have to wait. Oh, how we love things to be done right away. Oh, how we hate it when we have to wait in line or on the phone talking to someone or even for someone to respond to a text message that we sent out to them. It becomes so frustrating for us to be forced to wait. When I was taking Alan to school this week, I came down the lower road and I stopped at the stop sign so that I could cross over to Chief Schick and Lemmy to take him to school. Now, I'm sure that you all know that that is a stop unless you are turning right and you continue on right if you're not stopping. Well, I was not turning right. I was crossing the road, so I stopped. And as I was stopped, someone came up behind me as well. And I was at the stop sign for about 20 seconds, which is a long time, but I was waiting for traffic to come by so that I could cross safely and take Alan to school. And of course, the person behind me proceeded to begin honking their horn at me and gesticulating wildly. And uh, if I had my window down, I probably would have heard some choice things said about me. But once I went straight instead of right, I truly hope that they realized that they had made a mistake. But that is exactly how we find ourselves in society. And that is not confined to one generation or another. That is a problem for all of us. We have to remember that we must wait at times, and especially when we are waiting for God. See, we are told that God's time is not our time, and his ways are not our ways. So what do we do when we find ourselves waiting on God? Well, what we should do is pray. Pray that we can be patient. Pray that we understand that God is working on this in his time. And pray that our faith is strengthened while we wait. What we often do is complain. 
What is the holdup? Lord, am I not good enough? Lord, have I not served you well enough? Why won't you just do this one thing for me? Now, I don't want you to feel bad if you found yourself saying those things. And if I'm honest, I found myself there as well. We are human after all. And our need to question why or when something is going to happen is very deeply ingrained in us. But we must work towards a better understanding of faith and how we need to be patient because all things are done in God's time. I want you to think about it this way. Think back to when you were a child and think about when someone in your home, be it a parent or grandparent, whoever it was, was baking cookies. Now, when you were a kid and you saw someone was baking cookies, more than likely, if you're anything like I was, you stood there and you watched them be made, or maybe you got the help, but you stood there while they were made and then you watch them go into the oven. And now the real problems begin because now you can begin to smell those cookies being cooked. And so maybe you run off for five minutes and then you come running back into your parents and you say, hey, are the cookies done? And then you wait maybe two more minutes and you come back in while they're baking and you say, hey, are the cookies done? And you get told, no, go back. I'll let you know when they're done. And then finally, you watch them being taken out of the oven and you think, yes, it is cookie time. I've waited so patiently, now I get a cookie. Only to be told when you reach for that first cookie, don't touch that, they're hot. You need to wait for them to cool down. Oh, the agony of having to smell those cookies being baked and to know they're out of the oven and ready. To reach for them and only be told, if you eat that right now, you're going to burn your mouth. You need to get your hands back from the cookie tray. Anyone ever make the mistake of eating one of those cookies too soon? I know I have. Remember how much it hurts to get that molten chocolate in your mouth because it's too hot? Then you, as a child, you know, you go on, you ask a few more times, are they ready? Are they ready? Are they ready? Finally, your parents say, yes, you can have a cookie. And isn't it wonderful to bite into that perfect cookie while it's still warm but not too hot? You see, that is what God's timing is like. And that is how we treat him while we wait. Is it done yet? I know it's almost done. I can sense it, God. I can smell it. God, is it time now? I can see that you're working on something there, God. Surely the time is now. Oh, I need to wait some more? Well, I can't. I just, I need it now, God. And then finally, thank you, God. Now we have to remember that God's timing is perfect. Just like that cookie, we have to wait on God to give us what we need in the perfect time and in the perfect way. We have to grow our faith to understand that we have to wait for God to respond in his time so that we do not become like a petulant child complaining about having to wait. So my challenges for you this week are these. Have you thanked God for testing your faith and how he has grown it through that test? Have you asked him for wisdom? And are you trusting on his perfect timing? Amen.